Welcome back everybody to another deep dive. And uh, today we're going back to the world of Squid Game. This time, we're looking at season two. Ooh, exciting. Yeah, so for anyone who hasn't seen it, or maybe needs a quick refresher, um, Squid Game, it's a Korean drama where a bunch of people who are really struggling with debt get a chance to play these deadly children's games for a huge cash prize. Yeah, and it really took the world by storm, didn't it? It did. It was this global phenomenon. And I think it was more than just the shocking games and the suspense. Squid Game really gets at those anxieties we all have. Right. About money and inequality, mm -hmm. exploitation, and, you know, just feeling like we have to make these impossible choices just to survive. And in season two, the creator Huang Dong Haik, he's taking that tension even further. He's exploring this idea of taking sides, which feels especially relevant you know, with everything going on in the world right now. I think it's so interesting how he's using Suchin 2 to really hold a mirror up to some of those anxieties, especially mm -hmm. the ones that we're seeing play out, you know, right now. Um, he's not just showing us division, he's really unpacking it. I mean, think about it. You've got the upcoming U.S. presidential election. You've got this rise of political polarization all over the globe. It seems like everywhere you look, people are digging in their heels and picking sides. And Huang Dong has talked about how season two really digs into this idea of demarcation everywhere. He wants to explore how these divisions, you know, whether they're based on class, age, political beliefs, how they all feed into the choices we make and the relationships we have. And he brings this whole idea of choosing a side right into the games themselves. Right. So this time around, after each of those deadly rounds, the players face this whole other terrifying dilemma. They have to actually vote on whether or not the game should continue. Whoa. Can you imagine that? Yeah. You know, you've just survived this horrific ordeal. You've witnessed this just unbelievable brutality. And then you have to make this choice. Do you keep going? Do you risk even more lives, maybe even your own, for a chance at all that money? Or do you try to stop it, knowing that it means going back to the same desperation that drove you there in the first place? It's heavy stuff. It's wild how season two really gets into the individual stories. You know, it's not just about the spectacle of the games themselves. It's about the people behind those really impossible choices. And we see them grappling with anxieties that I think a lot of us can relate to the migrant worker trying to send money home with the defector who's still haunted by their past families, just crushed by debt, and they're all pushed to this breaking point by a system that just doesn't seem to offer any way out. And season two, it doesn't shy away from that brutality, like the reality of their situations. It forces us to confront this really uncomfortable truth, which is for a lot of people out there, these fictional scenarios that we're watching aren't that far removed from their actual daily struggles. And I think that's what makes Squid Game so much more than just some dystopian thriller. You know, it takes these massive systemic issues. We're talking economic inequality, exploitation, systemic injustice, and it brings them to life through these really personal stories. Yeah. Like take Gihun, for instance. He's back, but he's not the same guy who walked out of those games. Oh, no. He's haunted by everything he went through, by the choices he had to make, by the people who died. And there's this one scene that really got to me. He's standing in front of this group of activists, and his face is just etched with this like deep sadness and guilt. And he says, I'm a survivor, but what does that even mean when so many others didn't make it? And it's like, he's carrying the weight of all those lost lives, still wrestling with this impossible question. You know, how do you move on when the costs of survival feel so high? Ugh, it's that internal conflict, that moral grayness that really makes Squid Game so powerful. It's not just a simple good versus evil story, you know? It's about real people making impossible choices under these just crushing circumstances. And it's a real testament to how brilliant the show is that it manages to explore these really nuanced themes without ever losing that heart-stopping intensity. It's a show that keeps you on the edge of your seat while it's making you confront these really uncomfortable truths about yourself and the world around you. And the world definitely noticed, I mean, it's incredible how Squid Game went beyond cultural boundaries to become this phenomenon. It wasn't just a hit. Yeah. It sparked all these conversations and debates and even influenced things like fashion and music. Mm. I mean, think about it. Korean language, drama sweeping awards, shows like the SAG Awards, the Golden Globes, the yeah. Emmys. That's not just entertainment, that's cultural impact. It really speaks to the power of storytelling, how Squid Game tapped into something universal. You know, no matter where you're from, what language you speak, what your background is, everyone can relate to that fear of being left behind, of being crushed by a system that feels rigged against you. And that shared experience, that primal fear, that's what resonated with audiences around the world. It's why Squid Game became more than just a show. It became a reflection of our collective anxieties, a shared cultural touchstone for a world that's grappling with uncertainty and division. And season two takes that reflection even further 
pushing us to look at not just the systems that create these anxieties, but also the divisions that prevent us from working together to overcome them. Wang Dong Huck said he wants this season to explore the idea of demarcation everywhere, and that feels incredibly relevant right now. Absolutely, and think about it, you've got the upcoming U.S. presidential election, the rise of political polarization, these echo chambers we see on social media, everywhere you look, lines are being drawn, sides are being chosen, and the space for dialogue and understanding it just keeps shrinking, and Squid Game doesn't shy away from holding up a mirror to that reality, to forcing us to look at the consequences of those divisions. And you know that new voting system they introduced in season two, it becomes a powerful metaphor for all of them. Yeah. That the players are constantly forced to make these OX decisions, yes or no, life or death, continue or quit. But what's so fascinating is those choices are never simple never black and white. They're always loaded with these ethical dilemmas with the potential for consequences that affect everyone. It's like those moments in the show are holding up a mirror to our own lives, asking us to consider how much our choices really matter and what kind of ripple effects they have on the people around us. You know, do we put our own survival first, even if it means others have to suffer? Do we stand up for what we believe in, even if it means going against the crowd? Squid Game doesn't give us any easy answers, but it does a brilliant job of exposing just how complex decision-making can be in a world where the stakes feel higher than ever. It's those moments of choice, those OX crossroads that really get under your skin. You know, Squid Game isn't just about watching these crazy, deadly games play out. It's about the mental and emotional toll it takes on the players, the agonizing decisions they have to make. And as you're watching, you can't help but put yourself in their shoes and ask, what would I do? Would I compromise what I believe in? just for a shot at survival, would I put my own life on the line to try to save someone else? The show doesn't sugarcoat anything. It shows the dark side of human nature for sure, but it also shows these incredible acts of courage, compassion, even selflessness. And I think it's that push and pull, that tension between hope and despair, between our worst instincts and our best impulses that makes Squid Game so gripping. And what's so brilliant is that it never lets you off the hook. You know, there are no easy answers, no neat and tidy resolutions. Mm -hmm. You're left wrestling with these questions, these moral dilemmas, long after the episode is over. <laughs> it's like Wang Dong Hyuk is holding up this mirror to all of us, forcing us to confront not just the divisions and anxieties in the world, but also how we choose to respond to them. Are we going to give in to fear and division? Or are we going to find ways to connect, to empathize, to actually build a better future together? Squid Game doesn't lay out a step-by-step -step plan, but it does give us this powerful and kind of unsettling reminder that the choices we make individually and as a society have real consequences. So as we wrap up our deep dives into the world of Squid Game Season 2, I think what we're left with is this it's more than just a TV show with crazy visuals and suspense. It's a reflection of our times, a commentary on the very real challenges and anxieties we face in a world that feels increasingly divided. And while the show doesn't offer any easy solutions, it does leave us with some really important questions to think about as we navigate our own lives. How can we make sure our choices are aligned with our values, even when the path forward is murky? Can we resist the temptation to divide ourselves into us versus them and instead find ways to bridge those gaps to find common ground. Squid Game might be fictional, but the questions it asks are very real, and the answers, well, those are up to each and every one of us.